I don't care. I'm sitting on a beach while the tsunami arrives at the beach. Rocking the hat, waiting for a tsunami to slay the beach dancing all around the beach is this too too tsunami too tsunami oh oh and i'm just waiting for those waves to crash into my beach while i'm rocking this here hat Ooh. For the tsunami to take my hat away and ransack the beach with a me on it. Ooh, ooh, this tsunami is coming for me. This too too is so unruly. It's coming for me. Who tsunami is coming for me? And I'm like, but tutu, why you gotta be so mean? Tsunami, tsunami is coming for me. And I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for you. And because according to the Bible, if you build your house upon the rock, ooh, the winds and the waves, the tsunami to be exact, can come crashing all over you. But you gon' stand, yeah. ah. So I'm chillin' with my beach hat, waiting for the tsunami. Come at me, tsunami. The tsunami thinks it's got something on me, because it is a natural thinker. All it thinks is I'm a tsunami, and you're a human at the beach. But then it does not regard my god. You know who the tsunami is? I'll tell you. I'm multitasking, so if I'm looking up above over there, it's only because I'm multitasking while dealing with a tsunami. And I'm like, do 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 you too? <laughs> tsunami, do you tsunami? Look at me chilling at the beach, hanging out, masking and relaxing, wearing my beach hat, waiting for the doo doo to hit. <sighs> <sighs> the Bible says that if you build your house upon the rock, the rock, you guys, not the one with the muscles, but Jesus Christ. The wind and the waves can come bashing at you, crashing into you, slapping you city like you ain't nobody, making like Ike Turner cause you is Tina, forcing you to eat the cake anime, eat the cake anime. But then they lose, but then they lose, because you build upon the rock. <laughs> The winds and the waves come at you guys and they crash like <laughs> That's the tsunami right there. And then you'll be like after the tsunami, oh my goodness, look, I wasn't trying to take a shower yet. I wasn't trying to take a shower yet. I wasn't ready for a shower. Why'd you have to go and give me a shower when I wasn't ready for one? No. But anyway, thank you. I guess I needed my hair to get a little bit of a salt shampoo. Otherwise, more than that, dream on, dream on. Not really dying. Not really dying. It's not happening. It's not happening. It ain't happening. Wind and wave. Uh, uh, uh. Wind and wave. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. Ooh. 
I am a survivor. I was afraid. I was petrified. Oh. But then I gave the tsunami a run for the money. But before the tsunami came at me, I was thinking I could never live without this tsunami by my side. I spent so many nights thinking about how the tsunami did me wrong, but I grew strong. Oh, now I know how to survive the tsunami through the one who's Jesus Christ. I'm not that shaky little lady that's still in love with the tsunami. Now I tell the tsunami, get thee behind me, Satan, I'm in Christ. I'm too strong. I don't need the world to help me along. I am surviving without support. With nobody coming through for me, I know I'll stay alive. But you the one that tried to hurt me with your silence, well, I grew strong. Now I know how to get along. I'm gonna be... A survivor against the winds and the waves that came at me thinking that they can take themselves away from a sister. But then that's just a deal about you. The Lord knows how to survive these Christians through that solitude. Hey, hey, I am at the beach waiting for your trembling little shaky wave that's going to flee from me. Because the Bible made it clear that if you resist the devil, he's gonna flee. And so he's fleeing. And he's trembled with his skinny knees. Hey, hey! <laughs> man, oh man, am I waiting for these winds and these waves to come crashing into his sister. I'm waiting for them. They be rearing their ugly head. And I'm like, oh, how typical. How typical you be, you wind and you wave, you wave. Ah, took away support. Eh. And then what happened? I got strong. At first I was afraid of being disregarded. And then I read the scriptures, realized we're in the last days. The love of many is going to grow cold and people going to apostatize. They going to stand at the bleachers waiting for Christ to do a thing just to prove he's not. To prove he's not God. Until he comes through for his Christians, then it becomes clear that he is God. That indeed it is true that if he be for us, who can be against us? Now I know how to stay alive despite isolation. And ignoring me, acting like I'm not a human, go commit suicide, crank A. I have recovered from that demonic abuse, and now I'm strong. Chilling at the beach, waiting for your tsunami, hey, hey! How typical is this wave, eh? The Bible says the wicked are like a tossing sea, whose waters bring out mire and dirt continually. There is no rest, thus saith the Lord, for the wicked. It is no wonder you're coming out of me like a tsunami. You can't rest. <laughs> 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 Just last week, I was suffering so very much with mental torment. I had a noose around my neck, some animal in the America was trying to kill me. He's still trying to make no mistake. They wanted me to give up sitting at the bleachers waiting to see if a lady is going to end her life. And then she did and she got on the dance floor, shook it up a little bit, now she's cool. Can't nobody come at me now, even on the weekends I'm cool. Without the endorphins of exercise, I'm still cool. Cause I gave myself a schedule, I gave myself a routine, it's helping me survive. A cold, cold world that has no love. But I got the love of Jim, 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 Dance up me to like a blood content. Jesus, I got the love of the king. So now I'm hanging out at the beach waiting for the tutu to rock up and be like, I'm here, I'm coming for you. Uh, uh. Oh, the tsunami burns, guys. It has no dicker in my carabo. Tsunami, you guys. It was trying to engulf me whole. And I was like, God, remove me from the beach. Let's do a heli vac. Let's do a heli vac. God, I need a helicopter. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh. That was me, man. 
couple of weeks ago. And some Christ, I can't do this no more. I can't. I need a helicopter. Send me some help. Let somebody have compassion on me. Give me a good Samaritan or something. 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 Because look at these waves. Look at these waves. Look at these waves. <laughs> they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Jesus, they're coming. The tsunami is about to engulf me whole. And then the Lord was like, Carabo, Carabo, I'm your aquarium. Huh? Carabo, Carabo, I'm your aquarium. Huh? Carabo, Carabo, I'm your aquarium. Huh? Carabo, Carabo, don't you understand when I say I'm your aquarium? Carabo, Carabo, yes. I'm your aquarium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like karate, then they Lord, I don't understand. What you mean? What you mean? When you call me your aquarium, or when you call yourself my aquarium, make me understand what you mean by aquarium. And the Lord was like, have you ever been to an aquarium? And I was like, yes, Lord, I've been to Durban Aquarium. Tell me what you see, child. Tell me what you see in the aquarium. I saw a shark. I saw a whale. I saw some sea animals behind a glass screen. Oh, yes, I did. And Jesus was like, very well, I'm your aquarium. Oh, I get it now, Lord. Make me understand. You did it. And now I get it now, Lord. You're basically telling me I'm going to see a whole bunch of wildlife from a place where I'm ensconced behind a glass screen looking at them try to bash into me. I guess you're my zoo, Jesus Christ. So too are you, my aquarium. They'll swim and swim and come real closer. But I can grab my face and say, and the shark won't bite to me. I guess you is my aquarium. I guess you're my zoo now, Jesus. Look at these wild beasts taken from the wild and put behind a cage for me to gawk at them. So yes, I'm at the beach, rocking my beach hat. Waiting for a to 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 not me because I'm chilling in an aquarium at the beach. I'm inside a glass ball at the beach. Just before the wind and the waves come at the beach, I'm chilling in an aquarium at the beach. But don't nobody else be in an aquarium except for those that I've been invited into my aquarium. Come to Jesus, if you don't want to come, when the winds and the waves blow everything down, you will fall, just like the domino, 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 you're gonna fall, cause you don't want to come inside my aquarium, I mean the just I said did let me know during the week, that a thousand will fall on your right, ten thousand on your left, a thousand will fall on your side, and ten thousand on your right. But not you, baby. Oh! <laughs> Here it is that I am a chillin' at the beach. As a little timid girl that was afraid and petrified. Until I realized, oh, ooh, I'm in an aquarium at the beach. And all this wildlife, when it comes over me, I'm chillin', looking at it. Swimming over me, crashing into everybody else at the beach. That ain't inside of my little aquarium. On that day, that is when I crack up on the floor. Rolling around like a donut in some chocolate, the way I'm laughing. Have the wicked, oh, but God laughed at them first. 
However, when he was busy giggling at them, I was crying. Why? Because at first I was afraid. I was petrified. Thinking, how am I going to survive with all these wicked by my side? Thinking, even though I did nothing wrong, they still want me to die strong. But I held on. Oh, I held on to Jesus Christ. And you know what? He then told me, don't be that timid little person shaking at little thieves. I'm gonna give you everything you need You're gonna hang out at the beach I won't take you away from the beach Because the battle belongs to me I'm gonna crash I'm gonna burn I'm going to come against all, all those beaches And destroy But when all the water subside And everybody checks for damage control You will miraculously have survived That which took them all away I am your god I came alive I showed them that don't nobody come to my disciples and try to crash them because if I am for them can't nobody be against them but they grew dumb even though they knew it all along they were taking chances these are little thieves and now they're the ones drowning in the waters they threw at you they are the Maya being tossed up with dirt and Maya every day but then now that you are standing they go want to knock on your door say Carabo girl I didn't mean it I didn't even realize you were suffering how you doing today I did not recognize that you were at a funny little place Cause I for a season had left your side And I didn't realize you were suffering except they're liars Like Pinocchio don't come crashing, knocking at my door now that I've survived the thing. You were busy experimenting with burning a little candle while you're farting, hoping to cause an explosion. Hey, hey, he's been on to you. Busy watching in my ministry, acting like you don't see that I am suffering till I survive, and now you want to come and DM me. You better stay away. Oh, I know you were never in my aquarium. <laughs> When days are dark, friends are few. When people are suicidal, they say, let's see if she will be given a curfew by Jesus. That's how you test the Lord. Let's see what our God is going to do for her. She claims that there is a God out there, so I'm just going to sit back and listen to a woman talk about a terrorizer trying to make her commit suicide and pretend I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. And then he comes through for me. Jesus Christ, they're the same one you underestimated. And then you'll be wondering during damage control if I made it. Check in my ministry to see if I survived it. Having seen the demons all up in my grill trying to make me commit suicide. And now that I'm surviving, you'll be trying to mail me. Don't come to a sister. Don't write me. Don't you dare. Don't you see I'm at the beach called aquarium. Besides, there's no access. Can't nobody come into this aquarium unless they know Jesus. So since you're down, since you is a faker and a poser, stay away. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Don't come cockota with me now that I'm surviving. Eh? Now that I am growing. Eh? Now that it's going to become bombastic all of a sudden. Eh? That I was a disciple. Eh? Could be just our dudes. I just made up a word. What? I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. I made a rhyme in no time. Disciple. Ah, oh, booyah. Like, anybody can be a disciple of anything. But, like, you know, we talking about evangelism in Christ when you are a disciple. <laughs> That's my word. Please don't steal it. It's got my copyright and my IP. I pop it and gone and bought the rights to it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't steal it from America. Y'all love to steal. Y'all love to steal. Like, here you is stealing African content creators like content and you're hurting us and all. Like, don't take my word. I don't want to hear a single American rocking up on some guys. I'm a disciple. I'm a disciple. I'm a total disciple. That's half a Jesus disciple. Don't take it. It comes from Africa. Bah! Stamp of South Africa on it. Even though I don't like my country. I've taken it, America. Me, I'm not going to give you my copyrights. Ah! Hey, so this disciple of Jesus Christ over here. This disciple. <laughs> I just love my word. Like, disciple. Oh, I'm a disciple. Ooh, I'm a disciple. Hey, take that Lira song and just like convert it from I'm a believer to I'm a disciple. Totally works. 
I should be writing some music out here in these streets, man. Another stream of income that a sister girl just ain't quite getting right. Hey! Hmm? I was like, Jesus, please send me some editing. And don't you say I met the bitch. It's about to be like a total disastrous tsunami over me. The water, the water, Jesus, the water! And then Jesus was like, my daughter, I take pride and glory because I'm God. That's what's good. In leaving my children in circumstances that people are expecting to see them die. And then they come and they knock on their door. And then they wake up in the morning and realize that oh, she's still alive. Oh, it's happened so many times. I mean, I only just go and go get the story of um Joseph, you guys. Hmm? His brothers be rocking up in Egypt all those years later expecting a brother to be dead. Well, not that they were expecting him to be dead. They just did not expect him to be that alive. <laughs> and then, boom! <laughs> yeah, but the whole time, eesh, the disciple over there, that is Joseph. He wanted to be taken out of Egypt. He wanted to get out. He just wanted to be set free from this, like, insane asylum. That's what's good. But they didn't let him go. He stayed in there until he became the Prime Minister of Egypt. Until <laughs> he became the Prime Minister of Egypt, guys. Hmm? Mm. Then his brothers rocked up on some. Not only is this guy not dead, but he's like more alive than all of us. He's the head honcho. <laughs> Yeah, so since the Lord loves to do that, like, let's just, like, stick to a story over here, hmm? Children of the living God are in these streets being expectant, like, they're expecting an evacuation. But then the Lord keeps them in the space. Only to prove our points, eh? To prove our point! To prove that the battle belongs to meaning as on jail. I'm gonna keep my child in this horrid environment. And all of y'all who like to check to see if some people are dead because you were hoping that they would be... You're going to be like, <gasps> who else like experienced that in history eh? in the Bible? Daniel. Yeah. Hey, everybody expecting in the morning for the dude to be like, just bones, like chilling head over there, arm over there. Hey, eyeball over there. And then the rest of him is inside like the stomach of the lions. Darius be like, knock, knock. <laughs> and guess who said who's there? Daniel. <laughs> God laughs at the wicked. That's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> yeah, so Daniel answers, answers Darius. Knock, knock. Who's there? Daniel. Oh, the guy lived. The guy lived. Hmm. Never got taken out of the lion's den. Joseph never got taken out of Egypt. Just came back bigger and better. That's what's good. And then after Daniel gets out the lion's den, he's head over the kid, the satraps and the administrators that did not betray him. And the ones who did betray him are now the ones getting eaten by the lions. And it's like, ha oh, Luca's in a compromised position now. <laughs> hey, another story. Case in point. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hmm? They weren't supposed to go in the fire, but never mind not going in the fire. They were supposed to burn, 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 And then Nebuchadnezzar be like, where these guys be at? Where they at? Where they at? Somebody tell a brother where they at. Adding more fire, making it hotter and hotter. And then next thing, not only are there three guys in there, but four. A fourth man in the fire that looked like a son of the gods. What? <laughs> and then Nebuchadnezzar be like, knock, knock. And guess who responded? Who's there? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And their 
your skin still look like that of a baby? Knock, knock, who's there? Shadrach, Mishak, get a baby! <laughs> <laughs> the Lord laughs at the wicked. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, Joseph. They all got out of it. <laughs> the Lord kept them exactly in the same place. They don't go anywhere. Chilled at the beach while the tsunami was coming. And then the people who put them in a position to be engulfed by a tsunami. Be like, but they supposed to be dead. No. But like they watching the view of the sharks from an ensconced place. <laughs> Yo, so I was like really nervous there for a minute on some. How are you gonna just leave me at the tsunami site? <laughs> How are you gonna just leave me in the fires at Maui? How are you just gonna leave me terribly in a hurricane and a tornado? How are you gonna just leave me like this where my good Samaritan at? <clears throat> Send me rescue efforts. Send me a helivac. I need some like emergency responders. Somebody! Yo! Respond! <laughs> Crickets. Mm? Now, sister, out just surviving. Darius about to open a hole and see Daniel in the lion's den. You're gonna be like, snap, she was supposed to die. Experimenting with Jesus, so and not gonna come, not gonna mind you. Don't do it. Experimenting to see if the Lord God Almighty is the Lord God Almighty if you will take care of his servants. Eh, go on. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion speaks today. A wimba way. Uh. I'm watching it here at the zoo. That's what's good. They're the ones in cages, not me. Just as, like, they're the ones in some kind of, like, an ensconced environment they can't escape. In the water over there. At the aquarium. The sharks. The things that go bump in the night. The beasts. That's what's good. They're the ones in a cage. The ones who have been sitting back waiting to see a Christian commit suicide. And you call yourself a child of the living God. <laughs> you call yourself a child You think you're a Christian. That's what's good. But you're literally standing back waiting to see if it's going to go all dead, quiet, silent. Hmm? Because a woman finally committed suicide? Like, can you be that jealous? The Bible does say that envy is rottenness to the bones. So it turns out, everybody that's been watching me who was in a position to help me along survive a suicide threat on my life that did nothing. Not only are you Ananiasi and a Safira. <clears throat> but you are also like Shadrach, I mean, not Shadrach, sorry, but who's this? The satraps and administrators that set Daniel up for failure, but then the guy survived. Yeah, once he survives, guess what happens? Satraps, administrators, all of them like Korah's rebellion in the ground. It's their basic. Body of Christ, you are an abomination. Not the body of Christ, I apologize. No, not Christians. The fake conglomerate looking at me, abomination. Shadrach and Abednego, not a Shadrach, what's this, um... Ananias, Safira, abomination. Literally, you stood back waiting to see what's going to happen until I finally broke through to a point where having no support, no respect, no honor, and nobody caring for me, I survived. And I've got a routine that's working for me. Yeah! So I just proved that the Bible is true because herein lies the deal. Okay? Uh, what is this? Because of an increase in lawlessness, the love of many has grown cold. The great apostasy is upon us. People have fallen away, taking heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. You've wanted me to be wrong. You've wanted me to be mistaken. You've wanted me to be forsaken by God based on nothing but a carnal desire. And now that I am surviving, you want to come knocking, 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 knocking on my door. Don't do it. Please don't come. Don't. I will ignore you. That's what's good. I have seen the darkness of professing Christians. I have got too many darkened souls looking at me. Not everybody is a deadbeat no-brainer that is looking at me, but there's quite a lot of them that are looking at me that were in a position to help me along, support me, comfort me in a very dark moment where some evil man was trying to kill me. And this evil man's witchcraft is now short-circuiting. Nothing is working because the Lord has given me... <sighs> 
something that works and it's going to pierce me through onto the other side and very soon this is what's going to happen understand me i can prophesy me i can prophesy prophesy garabo not this rubbish that you're watching with prophet lovi mm -hmm. i'm about to get my ministry right to a certain extent not too much youtube and its gigantic behind is going to stand up and literally stop afflicting me with shadow banning that's gonna happen first time till a youtuber's going and leave me alone i told you they're intimidated by what i am and not just what i am but what it is that many of us are here in africa they keep on wreaking havoc in our lives and they're gonna stop because they've got too much to lose okay i've already spoken that way so uh they are about to open the floodgates of all the african content creators that they have shadow banned for no reason at all and i'm going to benefit collaterally because of that First Angela, are you listening in keenly and intently as I chill here at the beach watching the aquarium? It's so pretty. It's so pretty. But look at who it's crashed into everyone else. Yeah, they're going to let content creators go from Africa in particular. They're going to leave us alone. And so we're just going to have all the challenges that every Christian in the world has with every so often getting strikes, every so often getting a video demonetized or even getting demonetized altogether. But they're going to let us grow normally like American content creators. They're going to just leave us alone. Okay. Uh, that's what America is going to do. They're going to make a decision from on high, from up tops, that they're just going to leave us alone. Mm. For reasons that i have highlighted in previous videos please go check them out do it you guys while well, i'm chilling here at the beach taking in the sun sunbathing because i belong to heaven so i don't age mm. that's what's good mm. uh and then once youtube lets us just go you guys once they do <laughs> Anyway, whatever. Done. Once YouTube lets us go, I will collaterally benefit just like everybody else that's going to be let free to fly like a bird and grow like Nick Jones. Yeah, see, have you seen how Nick Jones is growing? That Christian content creator. Ain't no hate on Nick, frankly, brother. Like, fr see you in heaven if you truly have the Holy Spirit. If you're not deceiving the masses with your Christianity, see you in heaven. But Nick Jones and uh, such as him, American Christian content creators are just growing like weeds. Like weeds. Even though they every so often get a strike and they're shadow banned or censored or whatever, they're still growing like weeds. And one such weed that I believe is growing largely because he's just like super califragilistic, expertly docious hot because he's fly let's just let's not deny that i think it's because the guy's like super handsome and it's like there's something about him that's very reaching over and above that america's americans are just allowed to like thrive okay that's what's good yeah and like nick jones when i first started following him he was chilling on under a hundred thousand subscribers and after just a week i noticed he was like on one hundred and forty thousand subscribers i was like what's going on with this guy he's like weeds like properly growing up a wall and stuff and now he's sitting on 500,000 subscribers in just four months. It's ridiculous. Like, it is ridiculous how Nick is growing. And I'm like, either this guy is a devil worshipper that has signed his soul over to the devil, which I don't think is the truth, or YouTube has just allowed him to do what he wants to do. And so it has displayed that if it all, it has displayed the hunger for the gospel by people, especially when they're listening to a handsome guy like Nick Jones. So he's like sitting on 500,000 subscribers. And all I could think this morning was that, Nick, I was watching a video that he was of his that he was doing covering Doja Cat's insanity. Okay, um, that's why I was talking about Doja Cat earlier. Mm. I was watching that video, again, Nick, and I remember thinking in my mind that this guy is about to get. To, he's going to by the end of twenty twenty three. That's the year that we're in now. He's going to have close to a million subscribers, Not, like easily. Nick, by the end of this year, is going to be sitting on a million subscribers. He will. He will because he got to that 500,000 in four to five months and there is a good four months left of the year. So that dude is going to be hitting almost a million by the end of this year. All right. Because YouTube has let him make like Nelly Furtado and just grow. YouTube has just left him alone to reach people. Another one that's growing like weeds is David Mapalo or Ma Mapalo. I don't know how you pronounce his surname. If you were South African, it would be Mapalo. Just like that. David is this like street evangelist, young man on fire for God. Absolutely adore him. He's another one growing like weeds. I suspect by the end of this year, he'll be chilling on 200,000 subscribers, if not more. Why is David being allowed to thrive, even though he is more taboo than perhaps me? Like, he is more brave and brazen with the gospel than me. Like, in a way that can offend than me. Uh. Yes, we get to burp, leave me alone. Mapaelo is evidence of the fact that the world cannot stand. In the world, it is untrue that the world does not want God. That the world does not want the, the gospel. He is growing as he is growing. As a young American man... <clears throat> 
trying to reach people for Jesus with a very taboo message where he's, you know, he he doesn't take prisoners. He's very candid and he is brave to also go in malls and airplanes and just start giving the gospel and stuff like that. You know, things that would get a sister or a brother kicked out. Mm. Things that would get YouTube striking a brother or a sister for that content being apparently inflammatory or whatever. But he's growing just like, um, what is this? Nick Jones, Maypolo or Mapalo David is, is just, you know, weeds up a wall, just crawling about to climb over some like precipice. All right. Mm, that's what's good. And yet Christian content creators that also have been given a calling by the Lord in Africa, all over this continent of ours are just barely scraping it. I'm sorry. It is not that Americans are so shallow that they only want to listen to American content. It is that the powers that be of America are seeing it fit to basically thwart and restrict the growth of Africans content creation in Africa across the board in, in all niches including Christianity and the thirst and the hunger for the gospel is evidenced by the growth of young men and women in America that are starting channels and within a month or two they're sitting on a hundred thousand subscribers the world is not ignoring Christians YouTube is making the world ignore African Christians that's what I'm, I'm getting at they're literally trying to thwart our talent they are making us grow slowly but they're gonna stop <laughs> because African content creators are gonna notice it and they're gonna get upset and it's gonna be a whole thing I already spoke about that in my previous video Videos, please go check it out if you're interested okay and when then african content creators make a decision like no youtube i'm sorry you don't get to have your bread buttered on both sides and have your cake and eat it too okay you, you literally just don't get to do that sorry youtube no uh there's going to be such a raucous and a riot that ultimately youtube is just going to let them be plus america's going to want to do everything in its power to hold on to its power and the very thing that they're doing right now they're shooting themselves in the foot they are hurting their own economy they are afflicting themselves by hurting creative talent across the world so they're going to let it go for fly free and on that day when then youtube makes a ubiquitous decision to just stop censoring people for no other reason than the fact that they come from some continent i'm finally going to grow on youtube again yes i will still be getting come up against by witches which content creator that is christian isn't i'm still going to be getting resistance a lot i'm still going to be getting a whole bunch of haters and naysayers and what have you but i'm going to grow significantly better than what i currently am growing and even though i get a strike i will get the strike because i say something inflammatory offensive or maybe i spoke about covid when i wasn't supposed to but it will not have anything to do with me being african it'll have something to do with the fact that youtube is just a deadbeat that every so often strikes people for no reason at all that's what's good mm. however my channel will still continue to grow and it is going to be on that particular particular day you guys yes jesus loves me it is going to be on that particular day ladies and gentlemen even though i'm a minister for the ladies but the gentlemen want to be here and whatever do you okay it is going to be on the day <clears throat> When I suddenly start to mushroom like balloon, yeah, just gee, whoa, like out of like out of nowhere, overnight, that people that could have been close to me like a brother, close to me like a sister, close to me like a friend, a dear and a near one, because they were among the first people to stand with me and support me when my channel was struggling. People who could have written me, helped me along, pampered me with comfort and made me feel like it's gonna be all right. Yeah, those people that I would have also responded to because I'm not so flooded and inundated with emails because I'm so small. So I'm getting one or two emails every like four months or whatever. Those people, they're going to suddenly wanna slide back into my DMs again, talk to me. They're going to want to now reach out to me and be like hey i know Garabo personally just like <clears throat> people would absolutely love to say they know nick jones personally they know mm, david mapelo personally they they now want to slide into the guy's dms and say hey brother how you doing it's been a minute i'm glad to see your channel has grown to 200 000 subscribers in just two months congratulations and have that person actually respond to you because they know you that closely because they know you that personally I, i'm pretty sure nick can't get to every email and i'm pretty sure david can't get to every dm yeah there's gonna come a day when i can't get to every email and dm but there are emails and dms people who are like basically on speed dial that when they email you you skip past everybody else's emails and you just hop onto them and are like hey there how are you doing why because like i said they're closer than a brother they're closer than a friend mm. people that had potential to be that to me but that chose to stand back out of jealousy and do absolutely nothing literally watch me as people that were supposed to care for the attack on my life by some beast from america 
they stood back all of a sudden guys it just went quiet and they just watched the woman lament moan and groan and talk about how she's being attacked and at the height of my sorrow where literally tears were but were trembling down my face they did nothing they stood back out of jealousy on some let's see if jesus will help her along these are the people that when all of a sudden my little stagnated numbers that are sitting on 700 subscribers just under 700 when they in just like um, a week move to a thousand when in two weeks they move to two thousand when in a month two months i'm sitting on five thousand subscribers they're going to want to slide into my dms they're also going to be ones who leave my ministry for like five days 10 days 20 days a whole month without checking up on a person that has been going through too freaking much okay they will have gotten themselves inclined or used to walking away from me for those people they will have gotten themselves used to walking away from me for a week, two weeks, even though I'm literally on the precipice of death, on thin ice, dying. That's what's good. Mm. And so they will predictably just leave for a week, two weeks, three months, and then come back to see if I've RIP'd, coded. When was the last video that I uploaded? Find out that, oh, it's just yesterday. Watch it. Get jealous. Walk away. Do nothing. Keep quiet, Ananias and Safira. Keep quiet, satraps and administrators. And then come back again after three months. Well, they're going to do exactly that because they're predictable. But this time around, a three-month period in it, I'm going to grow something like 5,000 subscribers. And the shock on their faces, the shock in their hearts is going to cause them to be typical and predictable. Like the woman who passes her husband shade because he lost a job and then he wins a contract. That's what's good. Yeah, with the government to build some kind of a skyscraper that's going to put millions in his account. And then next thing she's on some, hi, hubby, I've made you dinner. Hi, hubby, I've made you breakfast. Look, hubby, I have baked you some, like, I don't know, chocolate cake. Look, hubby, I have prepared your suit this morning. Is there anything else I can do for you? When just yesterday you were passing hubby shade. Um, you fair weather wife, you. That's what's good. Mm. Close to walking out the door with your suitcases and everything, having cheated on hubby with some silly little man who's earning a nine to five salary when your husband is about to become the be all and end all of an entrepreneur. That's what's good. Then you rock up with your grabby little body that has been perused by another man's neither regions and you want to come and knock on hubby's door. That is what's about to happen with me. People who were in a position to support me both in my friends and family set alongside random strangers on the internet that had initially contacted me but then went all ghost on me when I started to suffer too freaking much. That's what's good. Yeah. Ananias and Safira, herein lies the deal. You're going to want to slide into my DM. You're going to want to help me in the way that you didn't back then. In a way that you held back even though the Lord sent you to do something better where I am concerned. You're going to want to now talk to me because suddenly you rocked up after two months of ignoring me and found that I'm sitting on something like 10,000 subscribers. It's going to happen because YouTube is about to set me free. My content is good. It is excellent. It is violently gifted. That is what you must understand. And people are going to pick up on that. And I'm going to grow like the weeds that I'm supposed to grow like. And Nick Jones, what it is that he is, understand that I'm about to be something like that. Somebody that is going to grow handsomely because people are thirsty and hungry for righteousness. But they're not being fed because YouTube is standing in the way. But it's going to repent only because America has too much to lose from being this defeatist. It's got way Way too much to lose so as a and a country a nation from all different kinds of three letter agencies from the top from the executive from the white house they're gonna make a decision to stop hurting content creators in africa because it's not benefiting them anymore so what i'm basically getting at is that africans um basically content creators across the world that have been thwarted by america as a strategy to keep themselves strong um they are about to be put on equal playing ground now with american content creators uh almost every video that you happen upon on youtube of value with great views is american it basically suggests that the only people that are creating well or the only people that have got worthwhile content to listen to at least the majority of them are american yes you do get people from other countries that uh have got viral videos etc insofar as those videos are in english but it is a very small number and it is disquieting to see that especially if, as somebody from south africa i should really be getting recommended to on youtube automatically lots and lots of content from south africa and yet i am being streamed and plastered in my face lots of american content to a point where largely most of the content that i consume is american that used to be the case back in the day with just regular television when video on demand was not a thing you know where it is that you just had got shoved down your throat 
entertainment from Hollywood. That's what was shown even on your television screen in South Africa because they were the lead in entertainment in the world. But now, Lay Jones and Lay Janes on the street are producing high quality content and putting it on YouTube, which is a, a tantamount of video on demand. And yet they're not getting looked at. And not as much anyway, as Americans. So it suggests that we can't quite get on par with editing standards, with video recording standards, script writing standards of Americans. And it is shameful for the US to anticipate that the world will not wake up and see that. And also for the world to accept that that's what's going on. There was a time when the Lord was blessing America with basically an innovative lead in the world because they were honoring of him. But now America is falling off the bandwagon and because they're falling away from the Lord, that is why it is suspect that American content is still the most consumed on YouTube. It is suspect because America is under judgment. If you're under judgment, it means you should be losing creatives. It means you should be losing innovation. It means you should be losing your swagger, the thing, the je ne sais quoi that you had originally, you're losing it. You have got to be losing it because there is no way that the Lord will continue to bless a nation that's falling apart from him. A nation that is walking away from him. So if people, if America is still looking like what it used to 10 years ago, 15 years ago, in terms of reception by the world, it's manipulated. It is manipulated because you're not good, as good as you used to be. This is not Dawson's Creek out in these streets. This is not days of Ellie McBeal where American content was still swallowable, consumable. Now it is insufferable and it is frankly quite evil, a lot of it. The world should not be so content to just continue to like chow it for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So to make all of us believe that that's what's going on is to think we're naive. We get that Americans can dance, we get they can sing, they can talk, we get they're bright, they're gifted, but so too is the rest of the world. And uh, the US is going to make like a company that is now begging customers to stay. It's that basic, like you all need to understand it's gonna happen. Need breeds invention. And so upon recognizing that we are being deliberately thwarted, our creative talent is being ignored in favor of American content creators uh, because of that because of people recognizing that they're going to want to try and see if they can't get themselves proliferated in other spaces. They're going to want to see if they can't shift over to somewhere where it's fair, where the balance the, the playing field is more egalitarian. And on that day, YouTube is going to be like, no, we can't afford the, the, the exit away from us. I mean, look at what happened when TikTok took over. Uh, when TikTok came on the scene, uh, YouTube finally like it uh, shook itself and started doing shorts. It shook itself and started to try to compete with TikTok. Their library was massive, however, they were still quite big, but TikTok did give them a run for their money. Do you know that I started an Instagram page and within three days it was suspended for no reason at all that I could account for when I was doing fitness? That's America for you. Like you're gonna stop doing stuff like that. I don't even try with Instagram anymore. Y'all know this is a filter so when my lipstick keeps falling off proper like just deal. Of course it's a filter. I'm not actually wearing a beach hat. That's what's good. Mm. So uh, no and understand, therefore, that because of the e the equal playing field that everybody's going to be put on now, because YouTube is going to become a company that begs customers to stay, mm. um, I'm then going to be basically allowed by the algorithms of YouTube to, based on my sheer talent alone, see if at all the world likes me. See if at all the world is content with me. See if people really hate Christians and prophecy the way that apparently, allegedly, the world hates me. Let us see. Give me the same pushing strategy, the same algorithmic fire that you've given Nick Jones and David Mapolo and see if I do not grow as fast as both of them. The world loves to see things from different vantage points and hear prophecy from different people across the world literally you cannot especially with christianity that's why it's it's it's, it's obvious this thing that youtube is doing the Lord calls people from all across the world. So you, America might want to believe that it is responsible for the creative talent of the world just itself. Or at least they're the ones that are holding the grandest majority of the pie. But the Lord is no respecter of persons. So if he's going to raise up a prophet, he's going to raise one up in America. He's going to raise one up in South Africa. He's going to raise one up in Brazil. He's going to raise one up anywhere. And if at all he wants this person to speak, he will allow them and give them a platform to speak. And people will heed. People who are supposed to hear will hear. So basically America right now, which is a land that is obviously judged by the Lord, is claiming through YouTube and very many other social media platforms that they're the only ones that can give the gospel that God has raised up. You're judged as a country. How in the world could that even be true right now? How? It doesn't make sense because of how judged you are. It makes absolutely no sense because of how judged America currently is due to its um, disobedience to the Lord right now. They should be losing the quota of e evangelists across the world that God has allotted 
towards uh, sorry in very many countries they should be losing their quota of of the fivefold ministry the prophets the evangelists the pastors they should be losing it because they are falling away from god there should be fewer and fewer of them given their judged state just as it was in israel when israel was in rebellion very few of the levitical priests were honoring of god only a handful a remnant were honoring so when then the majority of the gospel is now is still being proliferated through a country that is so severely judged at present that is messing up so much it doesn't make sense it says that the voices of other people that god is raising up in countries that are still obedient to him are just ignored they're snuffed out the consumption of american content when it is the majority of what you consume sitting in a different country you know there is a manipulation so youtube is going to like i said make like a company that used to be very very strong and didn't care when customers complained and then it starts to lose market share and then it starts because of that to pay attention and when that happens and it's going to be very soon it's already been on a downward uh, spiral that's what you must understand when that decision finally gets made from on high as in from the top i am speaking the white house executive national decision because this is a national decision it is in the interest of national security that they've done this or in propelling the american issue the fear of the de-dollarization of the earth has made youtube no not youtube america strategize in a very unsavory fashion against the world using its weapons the among the weapons of which are social media so what youtube is doing is a national strategy it is not a company strategy so it is going to come from the top the decision to stop because they're going to start begging do not underestimate goodwill when i used to do accounting at varsity one of the subjects i took but not too far the value of goodwill on balance sheets is an it's an asset right however one that is literally dependent on how people feel about your brand and it can box them its share price it can box them its value in the eyes of consumers and it can keep a company afloat that doesn't even have that much a physical cash that is bordering on liquidation just on goodwill alone a company can literally survive a near death experience that's what you must understand so america is is currently suffering with an nde a near death experience and its goodwill can keep it afloat in other words people's opinions across the earth people's opinions across the globe about america are going to start mattering right now when i speak they roll their eyes that's what's good but they're going to eventually deeply consider what, what i'm talking about me and many other content creators that are complaining not just content creators but just the general sentiment of people across the world about america it's going to start to matter because goodwill when a company is facing liquidation when it's facing crashing and burning when it is facing like loss of its market share can keep it afloat until it strategizes better to make real money and to actually be valuable without having to lean on such things as goodwill brand value it matters so for a for for a country that is as um capitalistic as america is this was a foolish move to lose your swagger in the sight of the world it was a foolish foolish move as capitalistic and as opulent as you are in making money draining opportunities where you can that you might like i said capitalize on them it was a most detrimental move to the business concern that is america it was a most detrimental move and they're going to stop they're going to stop they're going to stop and they're going to allow their americans to basically now be placed on equal playing ground you know what america currently is like it's like leah thomas swid swimming with women in uh in, in 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 women's sports even though he was born a man that's what's good it is an unfair male biological born male transgender athlete that is competing as a woman as a bodybuilder as a boxer as a swimmer slaying and slapping the living daylight out of the women in the, uh, on the athletics uh, field and there's gonna come a time when people are like no activists are gonna rise up and it's gonna be like no you're unfair you're unfair they have given themselves steroids unfair competition and as a result therefore they are losing their reputation not just on the, not just based on that alone but just the way that they are doing things right now the world is starting to shun them for losing their swagger and their cooth and they're going to care that the world should not look at them that way anymore and so they're going to let everybody go and Leah Thomas is no longer going to be allowed to swim with females neither are other athletes that are busy out in these streets being men going to be allowed to compete with women youtube is no longer going to make american content creators in that particular space because it's other niches where they're doing this their platforms are strong they've been embraced across the world that's why they're the world superpower they've innovated so well that they've literally gained global dominance in 
communications in telecommunications and in information they've gained global dominance and they are using it as a machete on the necks of everyone across the earth and it's going to backfire and when it does they're going to stop it has already begun to backfire it has already begun to backfire and so due to just how it is that they're messing up with their own name that's what's good they're then going to give everybody a, a fair shot so uh, girls are going to swim with girls boys are going to swim with boys and everybody's going to be happy now and then you're going to finally see a, a, like a, a fire burn that's just massive in terms of growth for youtube they're gonna realize how defeatist they were all along just how much the cultural growth the cultural diversity on the platforms across the board not just youtube instagram etc once the decision is made from up tops they are going to realize how much they lost by trying to hold on to power by squeezing the excitement of other people out of the way even the BRICS nations, Vladimir Putin made a statement about how, no, not Vladimir Putin, but Xi Jinping made a statement about how America, you're playing dirty. You cannot, uh, in order to keep your own power, be kicking out other people from the global markets place because then on that day, we're going to de-dollarize the living daylights out of you so we don't need you anymore. They are using their power to keep their power. The Bible says if anybody holds on to their life, they will lose it. But if anybody loses their life for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, they will gain it. America is trying to hold on to its life and so it's losing it. And on the day when they make a decision to stop with this particular strategy, they're going to realize how much more life there was in allowing everyone to thrive. So now finally, Nick will have his competition in South Africa. He will have his competition in Nigeria. He will have his competition in other countries that are just marginalized in favor of American content creators. And he's now going to have to actually really be good at what he does if he's going to be number one in his niche. He's going to actually have to be good in the same way that Leah Thomas, whatever his male version is, has actually got to train and be good to swim with men. Stop bullying the women. That's what's good. And on the day when that happens, you see this high quality content that I produce in this shack that I live in. It's about to give American content creators a run for their money. My workouts, my exercise, my dance section, my fitness, alongside my ministry, the things I have to say from God. They're going to give American content creators a run for their money. American Christians are going to realize how much they were given a monopoly over the gospel, unbeknownst to themselves or knownst to themselves. Whether or not they knew is irrelevant, but they're about to realize how much they were literally given an unfair monopoly over the gospel when the Lord has called so many people across the world equally, bearing no favor on one upon the other for he is no respecter of persons. They're finally going to realize just how bad the situation is was. They're finally going to wake up and smell the coffee. So the flood of people that are going to be uh, re not restored to me, but that are going to suddenly just start watching me from across the world, never mind South Africa, is going to cause some of these Nambi Pambi fluffy Ananiases and Safiras that did find me, but who underestimated me and who treated me like trash and who ignored me and who could have been, like I said, closer than a brother. It's going to cause them to come back. And they're going to want to now knock on the door of a woman who is too busy. And that is highlighting the apostate state of the church, the capitalistic nature of the church, how no different they are from the world, how fair weather they are. We ought to stick closer than brothers. The law says you must always hold regard of everybody, especially those of the household of faith. We are here to love one another, take care, especially of the body of Christ. The fact that I have just been left to writhe in all of my sorrow and no one in the body of Christ that has looked at my content has done more for my life than merely just kind of stand back and continue to consume my content every single day. It evidences their own apostasy, first and foremost. And secondly, it also evidences the insanity of America. It, it evidences so many very different things. It evidences the doctrines of demons the um, destructive heresies the the the, the last days great uh, what is this great deception that is even proliferated by a nation that has made viewership of content across the world biased towards its own citizens in a way that is now observable especially as a christian it's one thing to be obsessed with american muck bangers and dancers and makeup artists but when all you watch in terms of christian content are american christian content creators it says but jesus why have you not called someone from trinidad and tobago why am i not watching someone from jamaica there is a woman from jamaica that i follow but she's literally the only one are you telling me there's only one jamaican person that god has put on youtube are you telling me there's only just what her jeff Ali one nastasia grace for real for real no that's not what's happening they're thwarted and america is making a decision to only give a, a, a platform 
to some people from other countries so that they, it might appear there is diversity but it's it's nothing in comparison to the number of americans that are thrown in your face every single day i am exhausted of clicking on a youtube channel trying to hear the gospel and i'm hearing american accents like for 75 percent to 80 percent of the time i am exhausted where is everybody else the lord did not just call americans to evangelize he called us all so yeah no i'm sitting at a beach waiting for these waves to crash on me by the tsunami that's coming but i'm no longer scared I was afraid, I was trembling, I was petrified, but I am not afraid anymore because the Lord has made it clear that I am about to get snapped out of this. I am watching a nation crash, I am watching a nation burn, that is South Africa. I am watching a nation crash, I am watching a nation burn, that is America. But I am watching it on the shores of my own country, it's like I'm at Durban Beach or somewhere at Cape, Har Cape Harbor. Yeah, and the tsunami that's coming at my country is from America. And it is literally about to engulf all of my country starting with the coastal cities and then come inland and decimate even parts even of Southern Africa, never mind just South Africa. So it's coming at Zimbabwe, it's coming at Swaziland, coming at um, Namibia. These things are just going to keep on happening in increasing uh, measure. That's what's good. But like I said, I'm in an aquarium. And so even though I was nervous that, oh, I'm at the beach while a tsunami is coming, I'm not anymore. Because a thousand are literally about to fall on my right, on my left, and 10,000 on my right. But it won't come near me. However, once those waters settle, America, oh America, you are going to be so guilty and you are going to cause so much, uh, um, uh, such a bad taste, you're going to leave such a bad taste in people's mouths that to salvage yourselves, given that it's not obvious it's you who did it, do you understand what I'm saying? You're going to suddenly just change your company strategy or your national strategy when it comes to information, when it comes to communication, when it comes to telecommunication, when it comes to the ICT space platforms, your social media. Media, you're going to change your mind about how you control the flow of information given that your platforms are running the larger majority of the information platforms of the earth you're going to change your minds because of the collateral damage of how badly people will have been hurt by what you're doing and now also how much like what a bad taste you will have left in their mouth you're going to start begging customers you are going to want for there to be a mr beast from africa you're probably going to want one. You're going to long to find one because when people start to accuse you of what you are actually doing upon denying it, you are going to do everything in your power to damage control. I have already spoken about this in other videos before, but you don't want to believe me. So all the Americans that watch my content and stand back because just like your big fat chunky country is so envious of other nations talent, don't come back. Do not come back to me. I do not trust you. You have unleashed on me a monster, a menace of sorts that won't leave me alone. And you were in a position to see me the most because you are the ones that have got most of the information being funneled even to you so that you might be kept strong. So when I am getting bigger, don't you dare email me. Uh, don't send me a single email. And the thing also goes for other Africans that ignored me, especially South Africans. Leave me alone, you fair weather friends. Leave me alone, you fair weather Christians. Leave me alone, you lukewarmers, you reprobate, you having a reputation for being alive but being dead. Leave me alone. Don't DM me. Don't write me. Don't suddenly send me something. Flowers. Uh, a little bit of a hey carabo don't send me a donation via paypal i don't want it i don't want anything from anyone that was in a position to help me and now that i am helped now that i am okay now that i'm surviving now that i'm earning my own salary because i am monetized finally on my fitness channel i never intend to monetize ministry do not then on that day make a decision to contact me because you rocked up after two months of ignoring me because it's what you do Two months of not wanting to see a woman die. Yeah, you then come up, come back two months later and you're like, hey, how are you doing? Goodness, it's been a minute. I noticed you've grown. Congratulations. What? Yeah. If at all you had rocked up and I was still sitting on 600 subscribers, 700 subscribers, you wouldn't have said a thing. So keep yourself in my 600 subscribers. Keep yourself in my 700 subscribers in that mode. Mm. Just have a mirage. Look at my subscriber number and see a mirage that says 700 as opposed to 7,000. Do that. Keep yourself in that bunch and then look at God and apologize for being Ananias and Sapphira and beg him not to strike you dead like he did them. That's what's good. Beg him, beg him 
grovel at his feet because what you deserve is to be struck down given that he told you he charged you what you needed to do and you did nothing and i'm not the only one of your victims the body of christ is just fallen how in the world are you going to happen upon somebody that is giving such important prophecy and just hold on to them greedily without telling anybody else the gospel is supposed to be proliferated not set on because you're jealous of a woman's anything or a man's anything so the fact that i was set on the chest of by random strangers who persecuted me purely because i was already persecuted and Ananias and Sapphira beg the Lord to forgive you for your indiscretions but don't come back to me but as for me and my little hat at the beach over here I'm only chilling literally maxing out where it is that the Lord has seen it fit to leave me because I'm like Daniel in the lion's den I'm like Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the fire I am like Joseph in Egypt ultimately I will find my glory and when I do I will realize why the Lord kept me exactly where I begged him to remove me from I will see why the Lord did why what he did why he did what he did and on that day anybody that wants to rock up and claim they've had my back all along where were you when it was dead quiet still and I was suicidal so badly that any minute now I could have just disappeared from my channel without coming back again where were you when I was crying about some filthy animal that kept on bulleting the living delights out of me with death curses where were you where I had to come up with a strategy a schedule just to survive murder curses until something finally worked for me until further notice I've got something that works and it's going to keep me strong until YouTube repents watch the space Sending out.